So just a few updates before we get into it. I send out a monthly email newsletter. If you want to sign up for that, you can go to cidaburritos.com, throw your email in the box and hit subscribe. While you're there, you can also check out my podcast, which is called In the Shell. You can find out where to listen at intheshellpodcast.com. And then back on cidaburritos.com. At the top, I added this small phone icon. If you click on that, it takes you to a page that has an up-to-date list of all the apps I use on my Google Pixel running Graphene OS. So if you're just getting started or you're curious what I use, you can check that out and reference those apps. So around five months ago, I published this video, the big problem with Bitwarden backups. The TLDR, if you don't want to watch the video, I was migrating Bitwarden, my self-hosted instance, to a new server. I got it set up. I imported my backup, which I exported using the web interface. I checked, everything looked good. But shortly after, I needed an attachment that I had backed up in my vault. I think it was a PDF or something like that. But when I looked, I realized no attachments had been imported. After looking into it a bit further and finding this forum post, it turns out that Bitwarden backups did not export attachments. Fast forward and it looks like they have added that feature. They published a blog entry with it as well. So now attachments are exported in backups. So that's awesome. Now that being said, I still don't use Bitwarden because as Bush put it, Fool me once. Shame on, shame on you. It fool me, we can't get fooled again. If you couldn't tell, that was a joke. That being said, I recommend Bitwarden for 99% of people. I think it is the best option out there if you need a cloud-hosted, centralized vault, or you have multiple people in your family that use it, and you don't want to be responsible for your data. So I've come to a point in my self-hosting journey where I'm trying to simplify my setup. Now while Bitwarden running in Docker containers is pretty simple in my opinion, there were still some things on the back end that I wasn't completely comfortable with on how they worked, and different things like that. There were a few times during updates where things wouldn't come back up, I'd have to troubleshoot, figure out what changed, make those changes, get things working again. You know, for other services, it's not that big of a deal, but when your password manager is down essentially, it can be kind of nerve wracking when you're dealing with that. So that's why I moved to KeePass. One of the benefits of that is it's just a file. Your vault is just literally a singular file that you can copy anywhere. If you wanna back it up on a flash drive, you just copy it, that's it. If you need to use that backup, you just open the file with the application installed, and it's as simple as that. There's no needing to set up another Bitwarden instance, import the backup, make sure everything works, log in, things like that. I can literally just use any phone or computer and access that backup. So to me, that simple file structure of just a singular file is a major positive to KeePass. I just want to reiterate before I continue that if you don't self-host any services already, Picking your password manager as one of the first things to self-host is not a good idea. You should get comfortable with something else first. Try picking a less important service, self-host that, get your backup plan in order, and then maybe consider something like your password manager. So like I said, KeePass, it's simple. This is KeePass XC. I guess I'll start with that. That's one of the things that, I'm not gonna say bother me about KeePass, but it's something to keep in mind. So in the case of Bitwarden, they have Bitwarden server. It's where your data is stored. Then they have different clients for different platforms. You download all of those from Bitwarden. With KeePass, it's a bit more fragmented. So KeePass XC, I use this for the desktop version of KeePass. Then there's another version, which I use on Android, which is KeePass DX. After the initial download and set these up, you don't really need to think about it, but it's something to keep in mind that it is a bit more fragmented versus using a single company. So back to KeePass, simple interface. One of the things I really like is their password generator, password or passphrase. You have a word list that comes with KeePass. You can add different ones if you want. So it's convenient to have. They don't have a username generator. I wish they did have that, but they don't. And as far as creating new entries go, you have a simple standard interface like you'd expect. You can attach files. And like I said, KeePass is just a single file so all your attachments are stored in there you don't need to worry about exporting those or something else like that once you create an entry this brings me to another point quick so keypass also supports mfa and in this case i use yubikeys so i have the regular sized 5c from yubikey 
Every time you make a change, it doesn't want you to verify by touching the hardware key. I did end up purchasing one of the, I think it's the Nano YubiKey. So I just leave this plugged in my computer at all times. It's a little bit easier than grabbing my keychain, plugging it in. So I like that a lot that it works with the YubiKey. So that's another way to protect it from some automated attack. The YubiKey confirms a human presence by having to touch it to authenticate with it. So that's a great feature for security. KeyPass does have a browser plugin. I set it up initially, but I thought it was a bit clunky, so I ended up not using it. It does have this feature called Autotype. So if you select an entry, then click on Perform Autotype. Quick warning that Autotype into the previous active window, which is the login form for a website. So if I click Yes, types it in there, submits it for you. That's kind of handy. I personally don't use that feature. I just manually copy and paste everything. I also don't use the keyboard integration on my phone. Again, I just copy and paste and it works well for me. Now you might be wondering how I handle syncing to different devices since it's no longer a centralized solution. So for me, what works well is I use my laptop, I'd say for 95% of my work. So that's the only device that I make edits to on my password vault. Then whenever I make a change on my desktop or every few days, I manually transfer the password database to my phone and tablet using local send. Now you could sync your password database to a cloud service and then install the client on your device and sync it that way possibly. I do have it synced to cfile, which I also self-host on my desktop, but I prefer just to do the manual method, it keeps it simple, and I haven't run into any issues yet. So while I still think Bitwarden is a fantastic option for most people, if you self-host, I think KeePass is worth looking into. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those down below and I will see you next time.